What's going on, people? My name's Alex Elliott, and I'm going to do my best to help you to take boring simps to sounding like more interesting simps. Now, pay attention to this sound. Now that you've got that sound locked into your mind, I want you to try and identify that sound within the context of this full mix. Pot calling the kettle black, he who is without sin. Casting stones around the glass houses that we're living in. Judge a lyric book by its cover, but consider the cost trying to be covered when. Sick and tired of this daily song and dance, we write so we don't have to sing. London born and bred, but it shouldn't be this hard though. Your bread and butter spread you thin. We do what we hate with discipline. This mask I'm in, the truth is that my masculine has got me pitted up against my brother. I'm scarred and I ain't even lying, King. The Bible tells us the sins of the parents, fault and the children. Yeah. Not knock who's there, I guess calm as a rare. Did you find it? Now, you're not going to believe this, but the crazy thing is, is that sound I played you in the beginning is actually this sound. Now, when you see all of this, it could look a little overwhelming, but trust me, it's not as complicated as you think it is. And I'm going to take you through step by step exactly what I did and how I made this simp sound more interesting. But before we jump into those effects, there's an interesting point I need to raise, which is the original sound actually sounded like this in terms of its pitch. But by using the MPE to pitch bend between the notes, which is a really unique thing you can do when you're using the simps built into Ableton, it ended up sounding like this. I just love this software so much because this is just one of those things that maybe you can do it in other doors, but I'm not sure how you do it. Now, how did I do the MPE? Very simply, I first muted the notes that I wanted it to bend to. So for example, this was originally like this, but what I'll do is I'll mute these and then I'll drag this out. Now, the reason I mute them and I don't delete them is because when you actually flip it into MPE mode, it then actually gives you a guide that you can use to know exactly where you want each note to bend to. So that's my simple trick for doing this. And I did that for the entirety of this MIDI. Now for the interesting bit, after I had the MPE, I wanted to give it a sense of rhythm because the sound was quite static. And the way I did this is I actually took the shaper and I mapped the shaper to be able to affect the frequency cutoff of the synth. So as you can see, it's now moving in time, one over eight. And then by affecting the depth, you can control how much of the sound is pulsating or not. Check this out. So for me, I found around about 37.8 works really well. However, it doesn't just stop there because I then wanted there to be even more rhythmic interest. So I took an LFO and I modulated the depth of the shaper to be able to adjust and change when it got towards the end, which gave it this effect. Check this out. Now, why is that happening? Once again, it's as simpler than you think it is. If I just play with this depth amount, you can see the impact that it actually has on the overall sound. Check this out. And now if I change with the rate of this LFO, 
Watch how it impacts this depth. Kinda sick. But so like, I just let me not lose focus. But I just love how creative this DAW is. So if I go off track, please forgive me. We could just we could work through this together. I I can't keep my excitement in when it comes to this door because I was just on logic for so long, man. And I just felt so stifled in my creativity. Anyway, this isn't a monologue, but I'm using this LFO to automate the depth of this shaper, which is then affecting this frequency here, which gave us that really interesting impact. Now, I wanted it to feel a little bit wider and a really cool trick with Ableton that I've been doing is I've been using the shifter. And then when you put this in the wide mode, then it actually ends up spreading things out and deviating the left from the right, which ends up sounding like this. <laughs> which in itself is so cool, right? Because say you wanted a cool way to enter into a sound, you could, for example, make it come in like out of tune and then slowly come into tune. having so much fun um so that was the the one of the things i did next because i just wanted to find a way to just make it wider rather than it being this basic stereo thing so just to how it was before now another thing i wanted to add i'm gonna need the piano for this Another thing I wanted to add is I wanted to give the sound uh, more of a sustain. So if we think about this, which is how it sounds so far, right? But I wanted the sound to have more of a, like the note to ring out a little bit more. And the way that I love to do that is to add reverb. So I added in this hybrid reverb and I love to use springs because they have a lot of character and just listen to what it does to the tail of this sound. So you can just hear, like, if we isolate this, you can hear exactly what it's doing. Which is just like a whole other synth in itself. And like, imagine, for example, if we were like, okay, maybe we want to start completely wet. There's so many things I could have done to this track the more I'm getting into this. But say we wanted to start completely wet and feel like it was in the background and it's kind of coming in. We could do this and just automate the dry wet down here to do so. There's just so many ways to just modulate a sound and make it sound interesting. The thing to keep in mind is to just play when it comes to ableton don't think linear don't think like how you do with other doors think to yourself what will happen if i just took that and modulated it to that and if i took that and made it impact this thing just just like throw things all over the place now after i did the hybrid reverb i wanted to add a ton of excitement so obviously i had to turn to ott if you don't know ott is a preset within the multi-band dynamics plugin within ableton and if you want to find it just simply go search type in ott and it will come up there now this is one that i've adjusted myself because the full-on ott can be quite intense but i didn't want it to be as aggressive so i ended up just making my own which is just a bit of a blend in between and this is what this is adding to the sound we'll first listen to it without No, 
no, no, no, no. Just after you hear something with OTT and you take OTT off, it's, it's an absolute eye-opening experience. So OTT was added in. Now, this is an actual key part. Let me not forget this. It's important to add the OTT for me after the reverb because it's actually compressing and upward expanding all of those reverb tells. So for example, if I put the OTT before the reverb, listen to how it sounds. then when we flip those around and we put that OTT after reverb, that's when we get this. So, oh, I love when it does that. It just up and expands all of the gunk and stuff on the end. Uh, OTT is a game changer for me. Now, after that, I added auto filter because I wanted the sound to filter in. If you listen to the intro again, you'll see that the sound doesn't just come in straight away, but it kind of slowly filters in. Pot calling the kettle black, he who is without sin, casting stones around the glass houses that we're living in. So why did I use auto filter instead of using a normal filter? Well, the reason being is auto filter is alive. Hear me out. It doesn't just filter, but it does this thing where it kind of grows and then comes back and then grows and then comes back. And the way you do this is by messing with the LFO amount. So if you actually listen to how it would sound if I did the filter normally with just Pro Q3, for example, check this out. You get the picture, pretty straightforward. Oh, I love all that gunk. But the interesting thing with auto filter is, as I said, it does this thing where it grows. Now listen to how it sounds. And that is all because of this LFO here. If I hit the amount more, check it out. It will make it grow even more. And if I turn it all the way down, then it will be a normal traditional filter. Oh man, I can't help but just playing this thing like. <laughs> It's so funny, I'm so happy this song has kind of just got out already because it could never get finished because you just keep playing and doing so many things. But once again, let's remind ourselves how this sounded before we added any of this stuff to it. I mean, it's nice, we could use it in some cases, but in the case of this song, that's just not add enough interest. And now let's slap everything on. Let's see how it sounded. So much fun. So what are the key things to take away from today? Don't think linear. Just do whatever. I know that sounds like simple advice, but we can get into this pattern where we're creating, where we're trying to make something that we maybe know exists rather than just allowing our minds to explore and just be creative and just try new things. So just experiment. I've just shown you things that I've done, but take those principles of modulating and connecting this and throw that over there, dash that away, bring this one in. Just take all of that stuff and implement it in your own creative and wild ways. And also, if you want to know what that full song was, I actually did shoot and direct a music video to that song as well as produce it. The link is here. 
My name's Alex Elliott. If you like this content, like and subscribe and hit the bell notification if you don't want to miss a single upload. Other than that, I hope to see you all next time.